Hey, I'm Cece Summers, and today we are going to cook a can of beans over a campfire and use a clown as target practice, just like they did in Western cowboy times. So, so far we have slept with Dijon, Jade, Magnolia, Jack, and the Sheriff. And things are getting weird with Dijon. It seems like he is kidnapping us out of our bed, which isn't great. And also Jack feels like he's in love with us in true Jack fashion. And that is also not great. <laughs> but we have been given a gun for protection. I have no clue how to use it, but it feels fairly intuitive. So I feel like we can use it fairly successfully, right? Okay, so I was told that um, there were a few more codes that I can tell the innkeeper that I have not done yet. So I figured we can go and do that before we get into any more shenanigans. When you enter the parlor, Amon calls you from the counter. Ah, Cece. Thank goodness, I need to speak with you. It wasn't me, I didn't do it. You approach a little nervous to speak to him. What is it? Well, you see, you've been here a little while now. And, you know, when you stay in a place like this, you're bound to stir up, shall we say, trouble. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. Your eyes meet his, and you find yourself shrugging a little in response. Anyhow, I just wanted to clue you in on a little solution if any problems for you arise. Specifically regarding our lovely townsfolk. Now, if ever the chance you feel like you need to change things, or wish you could go back to how things were when you got here, leave town and follow the left path. After about an hour, you'll find two twin trees. Offer 600 pieces on the symbol between that. And there you go. Problem solved. That's a ton of money. You stare flabbergasted and confused. He makes absolutely no sense. Your brows narrow, but you find yourself believing him. He seems serious. It's worth the price, they say. You can decide that for yourself. He shrugs, motioning a little with a hand. Up to you to figure it out. He smiles a bit wider. Carry on with your day. I bet you're quite busy. Okay, well that's good. We can go back to before we slept with two crazy stalker men. You give him a nod before turning. Okay, go back to the innkeeper. We've got some things to tell you, sir. Okay, thank you, Kitty, on Instagram. There are two more things that I need to put in. And one of them, I'm not sure about. <laughs> You'll see. Okay, and this is the first one. Ah, I see. His smile only gets wider. I'll make some arrangements. In the meantime, enjoy your day. Um, I am terrified of that one. I'm really hoping that it's just wardrobe choices. <sighs> really hoping it's just wardrobe choices. Here we go. Okay, let's go figure out what monstrosities we just unlocked. Okay. <laughs> I mean, hey now, we're an all-star. Thanks, I hate it. I wonder if that one's supposed to be Ren without the ears. Because there's no swatches for that one. So I think it's Strayed, Ren, and Lawrence would be my guess. Okay, this has nothing to do with anything as far as I know, but it's fucking adorable and I love it so much. <laughs> I love this hair so much!
I'm sorry, I just... <laughs> now we're gonna get all the ladies. Okay, I think we're gonna go... I'm gonna go see if there's any more ingredients that we didn't have before, see if I can cook anything just so we have backup energy, and then we'll go exploring. Okay, we definitely have this. No, we don't. <laughs> I'm a liar. <laughs> oh, bread. I can make butter, though. Mm, I think I can make this. I have all of these things. Corn, ham, weed, potato. Corn. A weed. A potato. And a ham. Oh no! Oh wait, no, they're all there. Okay. What is that? Goop! Can I only have three ingredients at once? Well, how am I supposed to make things that have four ingredients? A lot of these have like four ingredients. How am I supposed to make those? Corn, ham. The actual fuck! Stop making goop! I want. What the hell? Well, now I'm just mad. Okay, I think I'm done cooking. I think I've cooked enough. All right, we spent a shit ton of money. We made some goop. I hope the goop doesn't kill us because I will be eating it. And I'm very angry that it did not make what it said it was going to make. It said it was going to make cowboy something or other and it did not make the something or other. It made goop, cowboy goop. And that's bullshit. I was also told by Adam Costello that you can go to the clown man, follow him up until he gets the skull, and then leave without dying. So I'm gonna go try that. I don't even know if he's still gonna be there, but... Oh, he's still there. Oh god, I still hate him. I still hate him. Oh, he's awful. He's horrible. Hello, I don't want to get to know him, so it does not matter. Let's keep going. <laughs> okay, we've got the skull. So now we should leave. We're gonna run away. <laughs> Holy shit, you can't believe it. He's a fucking murderer or something. You fear bubbles in your throat as your legs carry you back to the creek as fast as they can. Do you tell someone? Do you do something? What the hell? You make it back to the creek, winded and sore from the adventure. What would you like to do? Well, obviously go fishing. <laughs> like, we just saw a weird clown man dig up a skull in the woods, and, you know, I'm, I'm feeling peckish. <laughs> Boneberry? Yum! A strawberry? Another boneberry! Yay! Okay, we're gonna fish. And we're gonna be great at it. Did I do it? Oh, 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 God damn it! God damn pond weeds! Oh, but I did find a dollar. Boop. Yeah. What I get? I wonder if there's a way to like load up bait onto the fishing pole, and then maybe that will actually get me some fish and not goddamn weeds. Okay, there we go. Still not a fish, but at least it's not a weed. So, okay, does this mean we caught $12 or does that mean it's worth $12? I don't know. Okay, let's eat. I wonder, okay, I wanna see what happens if we eat some goop. Do we get sick?
Okay, well, the goop isn't even in our inventory anymore, so... Okay, we ate a bacon. Oh, that's it! That's all it gave me! <laughs> okay. Oh, fuck! How about some popped corn? There's a little more. I feel like that's enough to get me to the sheriff's office, right? Let's let's go to the sheriff and be like, hey, there's a guy in the woods uh, digging up skulls. If you're trying to get me to sign some fancy papers, I ain't budging. I can't read or write. <laughs> Sorry, you aren't who I was expecting. Uh, sir, there's been a crime. I saw a strange man uncover human remains in the woods. The officer stops what he's doing, staring at you before settling at his desk. He's quiet as he retrieves a pencil and paper. Tell me everything. You take a deep breath. I followed a clown man in the woods. There was a man in the woods. Why would we lie? Like, what would be the outcome if we lied about seeing clown man in the woods? There was a man in the woods with weird face paint and a strange jacket. I followed him across the river because I wanted to see what he was up to. Then I saw him start to dig in the forest floor, and he uncovered animal and human bones. I don't know how he got those bodies there or what he was doing with them, but it was weird and absurd. You remember the events clearly, looking away. The sheriff leans forward, looking you over. How old did the man look? You pause, a bit unsure. Around 30, maybe? You look away, fidgeting with your hands. The sheriff nods, finishing up his report. I think I know who this is. Stay out of the woods, okay? We don't want you around this fella. We've needed some more witnesses for him, so I'm glad we found you. Happy to be of assistance. <laughs> I can finally make an arrest. His smile widens. If that's everything you wanted to tell me, I just need your signature on this report. He slides the paper over, facing it to you. You look over it, coming to the conclusion he wrote everything for you perfectly. All you said for the account, at least. But he can't read or write. <laughs> you take the pencil, signing it before sliding it back. Thank you, sir. He nods, sitting back in his seat as you turn and walk away. Relationship none. <laughs> well, fuck you too, Magnolia. <laughs> See, because he's interested. He's smitten. I don't like it. She's interested. He needs to stay away from me. <laughs> oh, it was his birthday recently. Happy birthday, you actual animal. Oh, fuck. I mean, again, true Jack fashion does not make it any better. <laughs> Aw, cute. So the bastard and Will are two different people. I, I figured they would be this. Where the fuck did Will go? Okay. <laughs> Will and the bastard seem to be two different people. I assumed they were the same person. That's what I get for assuming. Assuming makes you an asshole. There's not really much to do anymore, I guess. Um, I'm gonna get some money. Get some snacks. <laughs> ah, damn it! Oh, it did so well! Oh! <laughs> nice. Ooh, okay. So I guess this is like a, um, endings? Why is there a Will versus Dijon? Jack versus Dijon makes sense. Will versus Dijon is, uh, terrifying. <laughs> Alright, I guess we'll go talk to Dijon. Oh, never mind, nothing happened. Okay. Let's go back uptown, I guess. Um, go to sleep. There doesn't really seem to be anything else to do. 
Nobody seems to want to talk to me. I don't understand why. I think I look great today. What's up, Magnolia? Hi, Jack. Good to see you. Though I'd rather... Good to see you. He gives you a playful wink. Though I'd rather see you in more. He seems to debate his words. Never mind, not the place. You laugh, deciding on what else to do. Okay. Hello, bartender. Thanks. I didn't order... It's on the house. Consider it a gift. Ooh! Thank you! That's another free beer that she's given me. Maybe she's gonna be body number eight. Okay, well, nobody wants to talk to me. <laughs> I guess I'll go in the inn and go to bed. Go to sleep. Dijon! <laughs> Stop doing this! <laughs> Uh-oh, your clothes have been stripped off your body, but you can see them folded neatly near you. You sit up slowly, your eyes searching for the figure you know will be there. Sure enough, Dijon sits in his usual spot at the edge of the loft, watching the sunrise. How did I get here, Dijon? And why am I naked? Dijon turns to look at you, his usual lazy smile slightly dimmed. Not a sheep. Not a sheep. Not living in this barn does not mean that I have wandered away. <sighs> I wasn't lo Of course you were lost. Dijon's expression grows uncharacteristically grim when you try to argue, and you go quiet, quickly. You were a mess when I found you, honey. I had to get your clothes off to clean you up. Somehow you doubt that's all that happened, but you aren't about to call him on it, honestly. He lets out a sigh when he sees you aren't going to argue more, and he sends you a soft smile. It's okay, don't worry. I forgive you for wandering, just don't do it again, okay? I don't understand your definition of wandering. Please define what wandering means in your crazy pants world so that I know what your parameters are. What are your expectations here? Because we very obviously have two different definitions of this word. He doesn't try to stop you as you get dressed and climb down the ladder, though he doesn't hide his staring. A little shudder runs down your back as you leave the barn, glancing briefly back at him. His face is dead-eyed and plain as he watches you go. You walk a little faster, wishing to escape his gaze. Ugh. Oh, hello, clown man. Hello, once again. Can't follow him or anything anymore. Um, can we use our... Can we use our gun? Do we even have the gun? We don't. I don't know what happened to our gun. <clears throat> I guess let's check in with the sheriff, see if he, uh... See if he did anything. Did you do anything? No, he did not. <laughs> the man is just sitting next to the creek. You could, you could go arrest him now. Uh... She just keeps giving me free beer. I love that. <laughs> My pockets are full! Okay. Let's go forage a little bit. Oh, never mind. <laughs> we won't be doing that. Okay, I guess we'll go to sleep again? Did I cook anything? Free up some space? I have an egg. Let's see what we can make with an egg. I wonder if I can make something else. Like I have the, in I'm pretty sure I have all the ingredients for this. Do I still have oil? I might not have any oil left. No, I don't. Fuck. Okay, so that made hash. Was I just putting in the wrong ingredients for the other one? Because that's not goop. That's definitely not goop. Corn, ham, pondweed, potato. Oh, I might not have potatoes though. Oh, I do. 
and a pond weed. Corn, ham, potato, pond weed. Big scoop again, I'm going to freak out. Okay, so what was I doing wrong? Ugh, ugh, I'm so mad I wasted all those ingredients. We should have enough space in our inventory then to go back to the bushes and get some more berries. Because we have some energy, why not? Barbatus berry, Barbatus berry, Barbatasis berry. Ew, fish fruit. Well, I guess let's go back to sleep again. Go to sleep. Dijon, I swear to God. Ho ho ho! We woke up in our room. Get fucked, Dijon. All right, let's see. If there's anything we can do. Does not seem like it. Oh, the bartender shakes her head. You've had too much to drink. We've had like one beer a day. I don't, what does it mean too much to drink? If you're here to report that a loved one's grave has been snooped through, you can fill out a form on my desk. Ew. So I'm wondering what happens. Cause he said, take the path to the left. If you leave, it means you won't be coming back. Okay, so either you leave or you follow the left path. Okay, so let's go back uptown. We'll go back to sleep. Florence should be back tomorrow and we can go talk to him. I don't really know what to do about Will and we haven't encountered the bastard yet. I don't really know how to do that. And clown man is gone again. Okay. I guess it's just go back to bed. <laughs> okay, we woke up in our own bed again. So let's go to the sheriff's office. What up, Florence? You, you approach Florence, who seems to be watching you expectantly. Hey, Cece, good to see you again. Can you ask, uh, can you teach me how to use a gun? <laughs> Good to see you too. I was wondering if I could take you up on that shooting lesson you suggested. He smiles warmly, looking from you to Officer Jed. I'm sure I have the time. Jed, I'm going to lunch. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. You smile a little when Florence attempts to sit up straighter, his smile soft as he motions to the door. After you? You smile, walking past him and out to the cobbles. Outside, Florence lets out a long breath. I'm glad to see you. I almost thought I scared you off. Hmm. I feel like he wants to come off like a cool guy, but I don't know if he wants us to come off like a cool guy. You know what I mean? We'll just be excited. Fuck yeah. You didn't scare me at all with your weird alien cult language. <laughs> it's totally normal. I'm really excited to do this. I've always wanted to learn. Plus, we get to do something together. That'll be fun. He seems to be staring at your lips as you speak, his eyes trailing up. Yeah, it'll be nice. Good skill to have. He turns away, looking downtown. Let's get going then. I know a good spot we can go that we won't be hitting any people or animals. And with that, Florence makes his way down the street, heading down and right past the office you both once came from. After about 10 minutes of walking, you find yourself near a graveyard. A small iron fence surrounds the area and the gate wired shut. We can practice here. A graveyard? Isn't that, uh, I don't know, disrespectful? With his back to you, you watch as he unlocks the gate with a thick key. He turns. Disrespectful? No. He smiles a little. Besides, we'll just be taking use of an empty spot anyhow. We'll go pissing off any of those who lie here. He motions for you to follow as he heads inside. The graveyard is small, and from here you can see towards the back is a dull, rotting wood wall. Same height as the iron one. It can be assumed this was the original fencing. Here we go, let's see. He looks around, finding a bottle on the ground. Young people don't know how to clean up, I swear it. 
He speaks as if he isn't young himself. He narrows his brows as he sets the bottle onto a fence post. A good target. I know it's small, but it should work. He looks back at you, smirking a little. Got the gun? Oh, uh, yeah. You reach into your holster. For a moment, you remember how he gave it to you. Hmm. Your face turns a little red as you pull out the firearm. Where was it earlier? Why couldn't I access it? Why was it in my inventory? I could have just shot the clown man in the face. Save everybody the hassle. Here, Officer Fl Just call me Florence. Well, you told me to call you Officer Florence, like literally last week. He reaches out, taking it and checking it over once or twice. You've been taking care of it. I appreciate it. You nod, not having used it to warrant it being cleaned. Now take it, firm in your hands like this. Without even considering your feelings on the matter, he takes your hands into his, putting the cool metal against your palm. His rough hands adjust your fingers, fixing your hold on the gun as it aims at his belly. Now when waving this thing around, you keep your finger off the trigger, all right? Only put your finger on it if you intend to shoot. Why do you have it pointed at your stomach? You nod, nervous, at the fact that it's pointed south, right against his gut. Like, that just seems like gun safety 101, telling me to not have the finger on the trigger unless I intend to shoot, but like, you're aiming it right at your own stomach. <laughs> he doesn't look worried, though. Alright, so I'm going to shoot the bottle? We oui, right over there. He points, moving out of your way. With something like a pistol, your aim is important. You could be a little more sloppy with a shotgun, but I recommend good aim regardless. Prepare for some recoil, so keep your arm loose for now. We don't want you breaking a wrist or something. He stands to your left, looking ahead at the bottle. Okay, go aim. You raise your hands, aiming toward the bottle. Your finger creeps onto the trigger, and with some curiosity, you apply some pressure. Pop! You fire, gun recoiling and causing your arm to jolt. Hmm, higher actually, just a little. Make sure to breathe out when you shoot. Oh, alright. You aim a little higher, taking a deep breath. A jolt of energy runs through you, a zip of nerves as you fire yet another shot. Pop! You watch as the bullet whizzes past the bottle, too high. Here, let me help. You get no time to protest as he grabs you from behind. His hands run along your arms before meeting your hands, his chest pressed solid to your back. Just a little lower. Here, I think. He takes a breath, chest rising and falling against you. Now take a breath and fire. You pull the trigger. Pop! The glass shatters and Florence is quick to cover your face. Glass splinters, bouncing off his hand in your clothes. Hmm, we should have stepped back a little further, huh? He drops his hand, letting go of you, and instead taking a look at you head on. You okay? Answer excitedly? <laughs> yes, I'm great! You stare in awe at the shattered bottle. I can't believe you helped me do that. Florence laughs a little, face turning a bit warm. Well, it was mostly you. You'll learn, I promise. He smiles a little wider before looking down at you. Wanna try again? Sounds just peachy. He nods, looking around for a new bottle. You admire the gun a little, the sound of Florence rustling around the graveyard, leaving you with a comfortable peace. Finally, the clink of Florence setting the butt of a new bottle down catches your attention. All right, another one, you can do it. He lets out a small sigh, tapping his finger along the top of the glass before stepping back. You also take a step back, just to prevent the spray of glass. You aim. Breathe. Pop! We did it! Yay! The glass shatters. Nice going. He watches, smirking a little. You got two more shots, at least till I reload her. Now this is important, Cece. Anyone can shoot bottles. You're going to be shooting live things. He looks tense, staring at you with a fire in his eyes. You gulp a little. Then, he steps in front of you. It's like this bitch is trying to get shot. Shoot me. I was, I was being facetious. I didn't think he actually wanted to get shot. <laughs> what? You almost could laugh. F I'm not going to shoot you. He looks dead serious. Right here. Do it. 
Anyone can shoot a gun, but not everyone can kill a man. You gulp looking at the gun. So shoot me. Why would I even do that? You die! You're crazy! You can't even believe this. He grabs your hand, hoisting it up and pressing the end of the revolver to his forehead. Pull the trigger, Cece. What the fuck is this guy's problem? He seems to be thinking, brows creased hard. This feels so silly, crazy even, and he doesn't seem like he's joking. I'm not gonna fucking shoot him, are you crazy? No! No! You glare, crying out. You're fucking sick! You look away. If you don't want to be in the world, don't make it my fault. You watch as his expression changes and he lets out a sigh. Then with a quickness, he rips the gun from your hand. He holds it to his head, raising his brows, and you quickly shut your eyes before you can witness more. Pop! He falls, gun scattering along the stone. just happened <laughs> why oh my god you stare in disbelief he just did that right in front of you your eyes finally managed to pry away from his corpse instead looking at the gravel of the graveyard oh the irony Cece Your gaze darts back to him. His eyes are open, a stream of blood staining along his forehead down to his hair. He sits up, grumbling before moving his hand up, wiping the spot with his sleeve. What? What the hell? Your eyes are locked on him. Only moments ago, this man was dead. I can explain, Cece, please. No thanks. Bye. <laughs> I'm leaving town now. <laughs> he gets up, brushing himself off before walking over to you. You don't know exactly how you're supposed to feel. I can't die. I've died over and over, but it just doesn't stick. He seems frustrated. Every time a new wound appears on my body like a marking. He reaches out, his rough palm resting gently against your face. What the fuck, bro? Why? Why? I, you didn't need to traumatize me like that. You could have just been like, hey, bro, I can't die. And I would have been like, mm, silly pants? That's silly. And he would have been like, okay, never mind. And then just not do that. Just don't do that. You don't need to do that. Does this have to do with your crazy alien cult book? What did the weird writing in your notebook have to do with this? There's a feeling in your gut that this is important. It's just a diary. The words, though, the language, I don't know. He seems genuine. I can read it and write it, but the origin, I'm not sure. Must have been something I learned before. Before? I woke up in a field with no memories about uh, seven years ago. I was covered in blood and I didn't remember a thing. He looks at you carefully, dropping his hand instead to rest on your shoulder. Is he supposed to be strayed? Because I swear to God, he has the same fucking hair. And I am going to freak out. <laughs> if he's supposed to be like strayed, reincarnated into a body that cannot die. Could you fucking imagine? He looks at you carefully, dropping his hand instead to rest on your shoulder. I don't know anything as to why I'm like this or why I'm here but I'd like you to be here with me, even if I scared you. His gaze is intense, eyes staring into what feels to be your soul. I really like you, Cece. You stare, gulping a little. You glance at his hands along your shoulder. You both sit there, silent, only about a foot apart. Before you can speak, his hands move instead, fingers brushing through your hair before he leans in. My guy, you have a bullet hole in your head. And you're gonna try to make this a romantic moment? Bro. His lips press to yours, warm and sweet, as he kisses you. Again, blood. You've got blood? 
running down your face and a bullet hole in your head. And you're going to be like, oh, you're so cute though. No, no, don't fucking touch. Go wash your face at the very least. <laughs> well, he can't die. So I don't want to get on his bad side, right? <laughs> okay. You kiss back, deciding why not? This is crazy, but it feels like everything in this town is. It's valid. You can feel his hand sort of grope you, having slid down your back to squeeze- Oh, 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 don't you do that. You'd say something on the matter, but your mouth is quite occupied. Are you really going to do this here? His hands move up, grabbing you. Oh no, I don't want to do that here. And you've got blood all over your face. This is so weird. This is so weird. Well, I learned some French. That means I cannot help it. You have no clue what he said. Well, um, we can, we can check having sex with a man with a bullet hole in his head in a graveyard off the list. <sighs> that was, wow. <laughs> Your face is flushed as you hold on to him. He leans and kisses you one more time. We should get back, I definitely overstayed my lunch break. He laughs a little, admiring you with a soft sort of expression. Are you sure? You're sad as he sits up, guiding you along through the graveyard. I'd love to just stay with you, or you with me, but I have to work. Maybe we can see each other again another time? You can tell he means it, hand held warmly in yours. After walking together, enjoying the breeze and air, you both end up back in town. I'll be seeing you, Cece. His hand squeezes yours. And I, you. He's just gonna walk back into the station with a fucking bullet hole in his head? And just, Jed's just gonna be cool with it? <laughs> You're stricken a little at the sight of a small, sad smile on his face as he turns and heads towards the sheriff's office. Hmm. Okay. Something throws you off as you exit the inn. The air smells of smoke. <gasps> What's going on? Something must have been on fire. Where would you like to go? Well, let's figure out where the fire was. Was it in here? Wasn't in here. Was there a fire? No. Fire? Oh. Watch your steps, Cece. Good girls don't sleep around. Fuck. <laughs> what? <laughs> you grow weary, stepping back and finding yourself back near the door. Oh god. Ugh. Bartender? Okay, let's go outside. Go to the store. The store's not on fire, that's cool. Okay. Mm, the sheriff's office? Sheriff's office is not on fire. So that's cool. What's up, Jed? What's up, Florence? Good to see you today. Hope you're doing alright. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, let's go outside. Uh, downtown? Hmm. No fire here. What up, Dijon? Okay, let's try the creek. There's no, there's no fire. Right, that's all the places. Downtown Sheriff's Office, store saloon. Yeah. I didn't see a fire. Is there a fire? I don't have anything to tell you. I ain't got nothing for you. I don't have anything. No. <laughs> okay, well. Let's go to sleep, I guess. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> you wake up in the morning and open your eyes. You recognize quickly where you are. You're no longer in your bed at the inn, but tucked into a lumpy, makeshift hay bed. You've woken up here a few times now, so it's not hard to recognize. You're in Dijon's loft. How does he hoist us up to the loft without waking us up? 
Like, that makes no sense. How is he, like, because he has to be, like, holding us over his shoulder like a sack of potatoes, right? Just, like, coming up the ladder. But, like, how do we not wake up? <laughs> this time, he's not sitting at the edge of the loft the way he has been the past couple times. He's sitting right next to you by the hay bed, watching you intently. As you sit up, you find yourself once again naked, and it's not hard to guess why. Oh, you're awake. I was wondering when you'd wake up. You really need to stop wandering. It's getting really troublesome. His expression grows serious for a moment, watching you, and he frowns. If I didn't know how sweet you are, I'd think you were trying to run away from me. Never. Never! I mean, me, you, and our 27 children living up in this hayloft forever. Obviously. But you wouldn't run away on purpose, would you, doll? You just got lost again, that's all. He stares at you waiting for some sort of affirmation and you swallow hard, nodding. Uh, yeah. Lost. You have a feeling it would be better not to make him mad right now. You dress carefully, then begin the slow climb down the ladder. Don't get lost this time, alright, doll? Be safe. Dijon calls after you, watching you as you walk away. You swear you could feel his eyes on you. Even once you're far away from the barn. Now he's captivated. <laughs> well, that's all of his endings. Um, at least before he kills me. <laughs> like, damn, the bartender gives Jack like four billion beers and I can't have three. Okay, we'll go to bed, I guess. I don't know. Can we make anything? I don't think we can. Plus, I have plenty of food. I just... until the weekend. Okay. And then go see if Florence has anything to say? Now. Okay, well, nobody has anything to say. There's not really anything for me to do. So, hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'll try to get some money. And... go to the leave town option. So obviously there's nothing for me to do here. I'm gonna try that. Okay, that's enough though. We have 600, okay. So let's go then. Just... Yeah, let's go to the left path. Just as the innkeeper said, after about an hour of walking, you reach two twin trees. A strange glyph is settled between them, etched into the floor. Six hundred gold, just like he promised. You stare at the floor, wondering if this would really do what he said. You scoff a little, taking the coins from your pouch and setting them on the ground. Nestled against a strange symbol, which almost looks like an eye, six hundred hard-earned pieces sit. Will this really change everything? You stare, an uneasy feeling growing over you. I don't like that. I don't like it. As if it's radiating some sort of energy. Then before your eyes, it starts glowing. Dear God. You stare in a strange sense of awe and horror. A beam shoots up, consuming the money that sat against the eye. You stare, the pale light blinding your eyes. It goes as fast as it came. You blink a couple times, walking closer and inspecting the money. Did this really work? You turn, looking back at the thin, spindly road. Huh. You make your way back to the town, following the rough and small path. You arrive back in Summerfair, heading downtown. You walk along the path, past the sheriff's office, finding the rest of Summerfair. Where would you like to go? Um, I guess since we're right here. Okay, so it reset. We are not approaching the happy man. <laughs> uh, 
sweet. So we just kind of start over and we can do different options, which is pretty cool. And which we will do next time. Well, thanks for hanging out and make sure next time you bring your pistols and your spurs because we're about to start causing some NPC deaths. It's going to be fucking awesome. <laughs> I'll see you later. All of my exes were crazy. I'm sure you've heard that before.